Hi everyone, I'm Haley, and this video is going to be about titration of a polyprotic acid. So we have one question, and it's just about phosphoric acid, so H3PO4. It's a triprotic acid with the corresponding Ka values. And we're considering the titration of uh, 50 milliliters of this acid with a strong base NaOH. And we're trying to calculate the pH at different points in time. So in order to understand this better, I think the first thing we should do is probably construct a pH graph. So, or, or a titration curve, I mean. So I have my y and my x-axis. And on my y-axis, I can label it as pH. And on my x-axis, I can label it as volume of NaOH. So since we know this is an acid, we know that the pH is going to start low. And since we see that there are three values of Ka, that means it has a stepwise dissociation three times. So we're going to have three different buffer regions and three different midpoints. When I put this on the graph, we start low, have one buffer region, one equivalence point, a second buffer region, a second equivalence point, and a third buffer region. And in the middle of these buffer regions, will be the pKa, and this will be the pKa of 1, this will be the second pKa, and this will be the third pKa. All right, and to make everything abundantly clear, I'm also going to write the equations out so we know which Ka goes to which equation. So we start with H3PO4, equilibrium arrows to H2PO4, its conjugate base, plus H plus, and this would be the Ka, the first Ka. And we have H2PO4 minus, goes to HPO42 minus plus H plus. This would be the Ka of two. And we have HPO42 minus, 2PO4, 3 minus, plus H plus, and this would have the Ka of the third, so the third Ka. And we can go back to what our question asked, which the first question asked that, let's see, after 25 milliliters of NaOH is added, so we're trying to find the pH after this amount of strong base is titrated into our weak acid. So just going to write that down here. So 25 milliliters NaOH. So first thing we should think about on the titration curve. First, we should think about how are we going to neutralize the NaOH? So the hydroxide ions in solution, what are we going to use to neutralize this? And the answer to that question would be the first reaction. So that would be H3PO4. Since this is the dominant species that is inside our reactant, our um, solution, sorry, at this time, so H3PO4, and we are reacting it with the OH to neutralize the amount of OH that we put inside the solution. And this would go to our H2O, as well as our conjugate base. Minus. All right, and this corresponds to our Ka of one, right? So, in order to be able to find out how much 
uh, hydroxide is neutralized by this equation, we can compare the two using moles. So first we should find the amount of OH in moles. So we know that it's one molar NaOH and we can multiply it by its volume, which is 0 0.025 liters and we get 0 0.025 moles. And then we have H3PO4, which we can find in the similar way. We know that this is also one molar of the acid and we have 0 0.05 0 .05 liters. So 0 0.050 moles. All right, so we can plug this into our equation up here. So it's 0 0.025 moles at 0 0.050 moles. And we would subtract the hydroxide ions because we are neutralizing the equation. So we want to subtract all of them from the product, uh, the reacting side, and then add them to the product side. So in this case, we get 0 0.025 moles, zero, and 0 0.025 moles. So how would we be able to find the pH in this equation? What equation would we use to find the pH? So for this, we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation. That would be pH is equal to pKa, which is negative log of the Ka. We're using Ka1 in this case, and that's 7.5 times 10 to the negative third, plus, of course, the log of the ratio of conjugate acid to conjugate base. So that's H2PO4 minus, and the acid on the bottom. But in this case, we can see that the amount of acid is the same as the amount of base. So this term in this equation come out to be one, which means the entire thing, the log of one is equal to zero, which means that our pH is equal to our pKa. And our pH would be 2.12. So we can go back to the graph that we made and plug that in. We know that now our pKa or our midpoint is 2.12 for our y-axis value. And for our x-axis value, we can see that it would be 25 milliliters of the NaOH. So moving on, if we do part B, that was 50 milliliters, I believe, of NaOH. So in this case, we have to think about what does this mean on our graph? So we know that at the pKa of one, that occurs at 25 milliliters. So we know now that the dominant species that is apparent in this solution at 50 milliliters would have to be no longer H3PO4. There would be a different acid that would neutralize the hydroxide ions because there are no more H3PO4 that is left. So when we go down here, we can take 50 milliliters minus 25 milliliters. This 25 milliliters comes from the fact that H3PO4 is neutralizing 25 milliliters as shown in part A, which means we have 25 milliliters left that still needs to be neutralized after all of the H3PO4 is gone. And this 25 milliliters would be neutralized by the next strongest acid in this equilibrium, which would end up being our second Ka2 or H2PO4.
So in that case, we would make our reaction H2PO4 minus plus the OH that is left, that's the 25 milliliters, and that goes to HPO4 2 minus plus H2O. This is our second neutralization reaction. And this, of course, corresponds to the Ka2. In this case, we do the same thing as we did before. And we can find out what the moles of OH is. It's one molar. And it'll be 0 0.025 liters. So it would be the same thing, 0 0.025 moles. And H2, you know, 4 minus, we know this is one molar, and we also know that it is 0 0.050 liters because the amount did not change from its original value. So this is 0 0.050 moles, and we can plug this into the equation. So 0 0.025 moles, 0 0.050 moles, and subtract from the reactant side the amount of moles that is being neutralized by this acid in this time. So we get 0 0.025 moles, zero, and then of course we're adding to this side 0 0.025 moles, we get 0 0.025 moles. All right, so this looks eerily similar to part A, right? We should be noticing these things as we go along. Um, so trying to find the pH of this, do I even need to go through it? So first we would do the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation as usual, but this time we know that it's equal to the pKa by just looking at it, because we know that the ratio, again, is equal to one. So if I write it all out, the pKa, the pH is just equal to the pKa, so negative log of the Ka. The tricky part is that this Ka is going to be the Ka of the second reaction, so that's pKa2, and that's going to be 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8, right? And I will just write out the log term just in case. This is going to be log of 1, of course, that'll be zero. So the pH, again, is equal to pKa of two. And that is going to be equal to 7.21. All right, so we can put this on our graph as well. Under our pKa2, so that's 7.21. And then our x value is going to be 50 milliliters. All right, so I think we all know where this is headed at this point. Um, trying to find the mole, the milliliters of pKa of three, or we could just find pKa of three at this point. And that's why for C, I actually didn't give you guys the um, mole, the volume of the NaOH titrant that we need, because this is what we're going to solve for this time. We can solve for it by doing an educated guess based on what A and B is, if we just use a few critical thinking skills. Right, so first I would say what we should do is find the pKa, so the pH at this point. The pH at this point is going to equal pKa of three, which is going to be negative log of, if we have the pKa of, of 4.8 times 10 to the negative 13th, and that would give us a pH of 12.32. All right, so we have 12.32 as our pKa. And remember, we are trying to find a ratio that is equal to one. So we want to make our ratio, the ratio right here, the ratio this time would be PO4, three minus, right, to HPO4, two minus, 
this is what our ratio, we want this ratio to be equal to one. So how can we get there? What would make, what volume of NaOH would make this ratio equal to one? This is what we need to solve for. So if we look back at our equations, we can see that from uh, part B, we know that it takes 50 milliliters to reach the second midpoint. And from part A, we can see that it takes 25 milliliters to reach the first midpoint. Remember the midpoint is where pH equals pKa. So if we wanna find the third midpoint, um, we would probably follow suit and think of maybe an amount on milliliters, that would probably be a good estimate on how much we should add. And looking at these two points, they go up by 25. Obviously, the first one is from zero. <laughs> so this is plus 25. This is plus 25 milliliters. So I think it's probably safe to want to add 25 again in order to reach pKa3 because that seems like the general trend in this case. So if we add 25 milliliters to 50, we get 75. So how about I plug in 75 just to see if it works, if my um, estimate works in this way. So 75, if I assume that we add 75 milliliters of NaOH, Again, we would see that 75, we would take 75 milliliters. And we'd have to minus 50 from it. But also, we would end up with 25 milliliters. So this is the 25 that we were looking for, right? So maybe we can plug this into our third equation and figure out if it would act the same. So HPO4 to minus, right? This is our dominant species. And OH minus, we are neutralizing. This would be PO4 to minus plus H2O. And we have to find out the amount of OH. So that's going to be one more. It's 0 0.2025, right? So this looks eerily similar. So it's probably going to work out well in our favor. That's moles. And then the same thing for HPO42 minus. Remember, this is going to be the initial concentration of HP, uh, HPO4. So that would be still. 50, 90.050 moles. So if we plug this into the equation, again, it's very similar to the past two that we did. We can subtract the amount that we are neutralizing. That's 0 0.025 moles, and then zero, and then we're adding it to this side, so 0 0.25 moles into 0 0.025 moles. So yes, it seems like this worked out, right? We have a ratio equal to 1 yet again, so that means that our pH is equal to our pKa. pKa3. So if that works out, we can put it now on our graph. all the way up here. So pKa3 is going to be 12.32, right? This is what I got before. And we can safely say that it would occur at 75 milliliters.